In this screencast, I want to show you how we can determine the enzyme parameters Km and Vmax from experimental data. And on top of it, we can also determine the margin of errors for these two parameters, for these crucial uh, enzyme parameters. Uh, so here I have my data in Excel. Uh, it is Excel for uh, a Mac, but it is exactly the same procedure if you are using the Windows version. So here we have our substrate uh, concentrations uh, for which we measure the initial rates. And these are our data here. And we can already make a sort of a guesstimate. Uh, we can say probably our maximum velocity of the enzyme under these conditions uh, will be in the range of perhaps, well, we could guess 70 to 80 millimolar per minute. It must be higher than our last uh, value here. And if it is, uh, let's say, uh, 80 um, millimolar per, per minute, we just go to half of Vmax and that would be somewhere in between here. And the corresponding substrate concentration would be somewhere between 50 and 100 uh, millimolar. That would be our Kmax, uh, our Km. So how do we uh, determine that? Now, the best way to deal with that is usually with an Eddy Hofstey plot. And uh, I have in a previous uh, video, I showed you how we can do that. So what we do is with an Eddy Hofstey plot on the x axis, we plot the value rate over substrate concentration. And on the y axis, we plot rate. So we can very easily calculate that in Excel. So we just simply use an equation and equations always start with an equal sign. So equal. So we divide the rate by the substrate concentration here. Um, and we also for the uh, y axis, we just simply leave the rate uh, the same. So we would have that. And instead of typing it all the time, uh, the same thing, what I do is I just simply uh, highlight both cells. And then when you look here at the cursor, you see this white cross. But if you pull it over there to the right hand bottom corner, it changes into a black uh, hairline. And if you see that here, you just keep your left mouse button pressed and you drag it down until you have all the data together and you see Excel does the calculation automatically for you. Now, these are our uh, Eddie Hoste data. Uh, let's have a quick look what they look like. So I highlight the entire range. I go to insert and we uh, would do a scatter plot with that. So I go to scatter here. Uh, I use this one, the first option that is available. And I see here my straight line. Now we can, we could, of course, uh, we could uh, label the axis, but I'm not too bothered about that. Uh, what I want to do is really have a nice trend line here. Uh, line of best fit. So I uh, right mouse click on one of these uh, data points and then say add trend line. And it comes up with this menu. We don't really have to do a lot. Um, all we need to do is really look at the equation on the chart because that will give us uh, valuable information. So here is the equation on the chart. And we know that in, um, in an Edi Hofstey plot, we know that our Km is given by the negative, so that would be the negative slope we can very easily see that we have here our slope is negative 47.8. So here our slope would be, because it's the negative slope, it would be 
0.8 and the unit is the same as the substrate uh, i.e. it's millimolar in concentration. For Vmax we know we know in an E.D. Hofstede plot this is the intercept with the y-axis and we can very easily read this from our plot here so the y-intercept is 74.1 so we have 74.1 and the unit is millimolar per minute so this would be our point estimators for this kind of for this experiment but we need to be aware that when we do this experiment it is just simply a sample and what we really want to get from that is uh, what how this enzyme with the substrate behaves in a general way so what we can do is we can try to find the population estimator for this regression what we have here and or in other words we can try to figure out what are the margins of error that we have here we see our line is not a straight line that there are some slight deviations from it so what we want is really get the margin of error for our uh, data point for, for our enzyme parameters. So how are we going to do that? First of all, let me move that. Now, what we can say is we want to do a regression analysis of our uh, straight line of these data that we have done here. It would be very difficult to have a regression analysis of this part here so we do a regression analysis of that because it is linear and Excel has some cool built-in functions so uh, what we need is the data analysis tool pack you find that under the data tab here and if you've got it installed uh, you should see data analysis here um, so uh, if it is not installed there are some videos in the description how you can install the data analysis tab so let's click on that and what we are going to use is the regression function here so here we have the regression let's get rid of this uh, stuff from a previous one okay so the program asks us the input for the y range and um, our y range that is this column here so we just simply highlight the entire range and we also take our label here in the first cell with us and we do the same thing for the x range this is our v over s the rate over substrate uh, so we have these input data we do have labels these are here and here and we have a confidence interval and now we just simply say we want the output uh, of the regression analysis and we put this output let's put that on the same sheet let's put that say uh, we start here so we've got everything uh, we've got the right values we don't need to worry about these things so let's just simply see what we get in terms of output and here we get a summary of the output um, and the interesting things that uh, we are concerned with are here the intercept and the uh, v over s that is our gradient so here we have 74.09 or 74.1 that is our vmax so that is what we also got from the trend line and we got negative 47.8 uh, for the negative slope so our km would be this so far so good but we get more information um, because we get also the lower and the 
upper bound for Vmax and Km. So for our Vmax, we find the margin of, well, we don't find the margin of error, we found the upper and lower bound here. So uh, we can uh, quickly highlight that. So we find that the true Vmax for the population would be somewhere between, what was it, 68.5. So we have 68.5 and 79.7. That was for our Vmax. So 68.5, 68.5 and 79.7 millimolar per minute. So that gives us the confidence interval in which we would expect the uh, Vmax. And for Km, let me just quickly use a slightly different fill color for that, we get pretty much the same uh, thing. So we need to bear in mind that uh, our slope is negative, so we would get here between 41.6, so between 41. What was it? 41.1, sorry, 41.1 and 54.6, 54.6 millimolar. So these are really our confidence interval uh, for our enzyme parameters. So we know that our Km is somewhere between 41.1 and 54.6 millimolar uh, for this uh, enzyme reaction and the Vmax would be somewhere between 68.5 and 79.7 millimolar per minute. So I hope this helps you to find out not just the point estimates for your uh, enzyme reaction, but also uh, the population confidence interval where we think the true value, if we did this experiment thousands and thousands of times, uh, where we think that uh, our true enzyme parameters are located. So I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.